Hello and welcome again. The IBESS exam for May 2022. It's happening on the 5th of May in the afternoon when you'll be taking paper one and then also on the 6th of May in the morning when you'll be taking paper two. Paper one is a case study. It's one hour long and it accounts for 30% of the total marks. You'll be provided with information in the resource booklet and you'll be required to extract some data from that booklet, combine it with some of your knowledge of ESS and to complete the case study. Then, after a night of rest, you'll return in the morning to take the all-important paper two. And I say all-important because paper two carries 50% of your total score in environmental systems and societies, with the other 20% coming from your IA, which is already completed. So this 50% is going to be split into two components. The first component is section A, and of the total of 65 marks, section A is going to account for 25 of those marks, and section B, where you choose two questions, with each question split into parts A, B, and C, those two questions will account for 40 marks. And the questions in section A are going to be based on graphs and charts and various bits of information where you write on two, three, maybe five or six lines with questions uh, in distinct parts which would add up to a maximum of four marks maybe for one particular part. But in section B, each part A, B, and C will add up to a total of 20. And the all important part is part C, because there are two part C's that you'll have to do, and they'll add up to a total of 18 marks. That's 18 out of 65, which makes up 50% of the score. So if you do the maths, you'll find out that the two part C questions, if done well, could contribute a big chunk to your final grade in ESS. And knowing how to approach this Part C question and to do well on it is very important. So what I'll be doing is I'll be sharing with you an exemplar which, which comes from last November exams where I've written a model answer for a Part C question. But before we go in and take a closer look, I want to share with you for the first time what I'm going to be calling the tip of the year, because I've been sharing these tips annually for ESS exams for several years now. And you can use the links below this video on YouTube to access all of the advice I've given in previous years. But the tip for this year is the use of the mind map. And here I have a typical mind map that I made for my students. And I'm going to go in and give you a closer look and to talk a little bit about the model answer for part C and the use of the mind map in ESS. Mind map is a very, very powerful tool for studying and organizing information in any subject. But for ESS in particular, it is very useful to have two or three of these to cover topics because, as you know, ESS is a holistic study, which means that there are multiple connections to make among the various parts of the course. And then, of course, it follows a systems approach. So that immediately lends itself to certain kinds of systems diagrams that show inputs, outputs, transfers, and transformations. But for this topic of eutrophication, the management system that we must follow could be simply put into three steps. The ABCs of environmental management, I like to call it. For instance, as we look at the topic of eutrophication, one way to manage it is to avoid the problem altogether, which is to not use fertilizers and don't let fertilizers or soil wash off into aquatic systems. 
course, depending upon what the issue is, it might be plastics, when we should not use plastics or not use oil, as the case might be, depending upon whatever the environmental problem, particularly pollution, is, we could avoid it altogether. So that is the first step in management and in organizing in your brain how you would lay down a management plan for many problems that you encounter um, in ESS. The second tier in the management approach is the B of the management system or the block method. So in the case of eutrophication it would be planting of buffer strips for instance as you see in this diagram that would prevent the runoff of fertilizers into aquatic systems and finally the third there in the management system would be the cleanup approach at the third level in the ABCs of management that would of course uh, mean that you would dredge lakes uh, restock them with plants or add lime to lakes that might have been acidified in the case of acid rain so the mind map is a very, very powerful tool and I would highly encourage you to make your own, of course. And you look at the ESS guide and you take the understandings and you take the applications and what's required and you use it to build notes like this or mind maps. Then you would have a very, very powerful way of reviewing your work in the lead up to the examinations. Now let's take a look at the model answer to that part C question that I promised. And here is the question from last November's exam. To what extent is the use of solid domestic waste as an energy source beneficial to society? And I wrote out this model answer which I will read to you for the benefit of any students who might be visually impaired. Solid domestic waste includes paper, plastic, glass, metals, food waste. The waste from your home, your school, the restaurants, the stadiums, bus, train stations and airports all contribute to a huge amount of solid domestic waste. SDW. In many less economically developed countries, LEDCs, SDW is managed by a thriving community of waste pickers and unwanted waste materials are burnt in bonfires or disposed of in poorly managed landfills. In more developed countries, MEDCs, there are well-managed sanitary landfills and incinerators which manage their emissions and carefully dispose of toxic leftover incinerator ash. The waste to energy solution is very much anthropocentric in nature as it seeks to manage solid domestic waste in a way that maximizes benefits to society. Strategies that focus on the goal of zero waste could either be ecocentric or technocentric. Following an ecocentric approach, the aim is waste reduction by radical lifestyle changes. A technocentric perspective will consider technology like more expensive biodegradable packaging that makes more profit for big business and passes the cost to the consumer. These value systems are very much a continuum, but environmental management is inherently anthropocentric, with sustainable development as its central focus. Waste to energy systems can achieve this balance if well managed. A sanitary landfill covers waste and collects leachate but also contains gas fence that can be a rich source of biogas, methane. This can be supplied to homes for cooking or used as an energy source in small power plants. But there are costs associated with this. The source of energy is particularly beneficial to a society that has limited access to low-cost energy. An alternative approach is the waste to energy incinerator, which uses the heat generated from burning waste to turn water into high-pressure steam, which turns power-generating turbines. This is a source of low-cost energy, but incinerators need to be fitted with stacks that manage emissions and they generate a highly toxic ash. These approaches are very useful for society in the short term 
as they offer effective waste disposal methods and a source of cheap energy. On the other hand, landfills require land area and incinerators generate pollutants. Long-term solutions could include rethink of the production of consumer goods to make them 100% recyclable and putting systems in place to ensure awareness and acceptance of this approach. Also, the use of biodegradable packaging is an area for research and development. Finally, societies with poor access to cheap energy should explore clean, renewable sources of energy like wind and solar energy. Clearly, there are short-term benefits to the use of solid domestic waste as a source of energy. But over the long term, society should aim for zero-waste strategies and clean, renewable energy. Now, taking this model answer and looking at it in line with the top mark band for this nine mark question, you could see that all of these aspects fully included in the response. So I would like you to have a look at this and to revisit the exemplar and to have this rubric in mind as you answer the nine mark questions in this year's examinations. Good luck in this year's exams.